Okay, I'm going to talk to you about a question uh, one of my students asked, Nebi. It was a really good question, and other people ask this question all the time. Maybe you've never thought about it. Uh, this is more like an AP Physics C or Engineering Physics question. The question is this. If you charge up a couple plates in a capacitor, so I'm going to turn up the voltage here on the battery, the 1.5 volt battery, and these capacitor plates get a bunch of charge. The top one's positive, the bottom one's negative. You're like, duh, I already knew that. What if we check the voltage across these plates? Well, it's 1.5 volts. Duh, you already knew that too because it's hooked up to a battery. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the battery. Okay, now I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to pull the plates away from each other. Now the charge on the plates have to stay the same during this process because, you know, where can they go? They can't go anywhere. So I'm going to pull the plates away from each other. What do you think will happen to the voltage across the plates um, as I pull them away from each other? Is the voltage going to get bigger? Is it going to stay the same? Or is it going to get smaller? So if you want to think about this riddle, pause the video and think about it. Um, give you some time here. Okay, hopefully you've paused it and thought about it if you want. I know no one ever pauses it. <laughs> You're lazy. You're like me. Well, if you had paused it, you probably would have reasoned, well, since the charge on the plate stays the same and the charge is what's creating the electrical potential, I predict the voltage between the plates is going to stay the same. Well, check this out. I'm going to separate these, make these farther apart, and I'm going to check and now it's three volts, three volts instead of 1.5 volts. And you're like, hold on, what? You just pull these plates away from each other and now the voltage between them is higher? This is really counterintuitive. My student didn't like it. Uh, he asked me about it and I was like, oh God, yeah. I actually, honestly, I did not like it either. So I gave him an answer, it wasn't that great. I promised him I'd give him a better one. This is the better one and it goes out to everyone who has never gotten a straight answer on this. How in the hell? Can the voltage between these plates get bigger when you separate them? So I think why it's counterintuitive is people probably think to themselves, they're like, hey, um, you know, the electric potential, oops, that's a rectangle. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, the electric potential as a function of R is like K, you know, charges over R. Typically, you get farther away, you decrease, right? As this R gets bigger, you decrease the potential. So why the heck is the voltage increasing here? And it's not just Nebby wondering about this. Uh, other people have wondered about it too. So uh, let's see here. Get rid of that. Uh, my boy Toby here. I don't know Toby, but he asked a good question on physics stack exchange. Why is the voltage increase when capacitor plates are separated? This was cool. He said his TA showed him this. She like physically connected the plates, physically measured the voltage, and then they physically saw that when you separate them, the voltage increased. She couldn't give him a good answer. He's over here on Stack Exchange asking for one. Um, that's what my student asked, Nebby. It's a good question. Uh, I gave the same answer that Carlos gave right here. So Carlos, you know, he won the check mark. Good job, deservedly. He said something like, well, you know, like, talked about how the electric field, uh, the charges field of view makes it so you could think about this kind of the same way you think about an infinite, infinite plane. I uh, just did not, I got to the end of it. I explained it to my student and I felt grimy because I didn't even really fully believe what I was saying. So this is for you, uh, Toby. This is for you, Nebby. This is for everyone that wants a straight answer. How the hell can the capacitor plate voltage increase when they're separated? Just give me a physical answer. I don't want some, I don't want some uh, mathematical answer. I don't want this whole like field of view of the charge. I'm not clowning on you, Carlos. Like this is what I said and you deserve the green check mark. I'm not trying to, not trying to sleaze your green check mark away from you. It's a good answer is what I gave. But this is very weird, like field of view. Charge, what do you mean field of view? Can you give me a physical reason? I'm gonna give you the physical reason. This is it. It's gonna be really useful for anyone that's been puzzled over this. I gotta be honest, I've taught physics for 20 years. When I thought about it, I was puzzled over it. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a physical explanation here. You might think the easiest thing to do would use a point charge. So if we put a point charge here, maybe we could put another point charge, mess around with them. Point charges are annoying. It's going to be impossible to think about this with a point charge, really, because, or it's going to be harder. It's going to be awkward because point charges create infinite potentials, right? The function goes like 1 over r. It just blows up. Unless you want to be dealing with infinities, don't deal with a point charge. So what you could do uh, instead, uh, let's imagine you've got a little plate of charge. Imagine this is a little, um, like a, you know, viewed from the side, it would be a circular plate of charge with electric potential, or sorry, with electric charge surface density sigma, just smeared out on the plate. So let's take that example. 
um, and you just put it here. What's it going to do? It creates an electric potential as well, but this one's finite. It's not a freaking infinite spike. It's a finite spike, which is beautiful. This is the function. If you're interested in seeing where that comes from, you just do a little integral. I can do that video too. That's not really the point of this video. The point is to try to explain why the potential difference between these plates increases when you separate them. So here's a plate, and here's what the potential looks like from that single plate. I've assumed this is positive charge. That's why it's giving you a positive value here. In other words, this is a graph of the electric potential created by this plate. It's a little mountain. It makes sense. Electric potential is like the landscape created uh, by the electric charge. You know, this creates a little mountain of electric potential around it because it's positive. If you had a negative plate, it would create a little valley. So that's what we need to do now. The whole idea was you have two different plates here. So let's create a little valley. Uh, here's another plate. Let's make this one negatively charged. What would its electric potential look like? A valley. It creates a little valley in electric potential landscape. Now, to answer this question, we don't want to know the potential from either plate. We want to know the voltage between the plates. Now, here's the key idea. The voltage between the plates is going to be the value of the total V at this plate cr that's created by both plates minus the value of the total V created at the bottom plate, which is created by both plates. In other words, both plates are contributing to the value of the V at each plate. This is important. This is the key idea. This is why just simply think of it naively doesn't work. In other words, if I wanted to know, say, the value of uh, the electric potential at 0.5, halfway in between them, well, the value up here from the top plate, or this positive plate creates an electric potential value halfway in between them of like 0.6, and the negative one creates negative 0.6, and so that's equal to zero. If I was going to ask you what the V value was, it'd be zero in the middle. What would the value be, you know, like over here at the location of this plate? Now we can ask that question. If it was a point charge, we couldn't ask it. At the location of the green plate, what's the total V value? Total V. Well, the V created by the positive plate is 1 at this location. The V created by the negative plate is like negative 0.4. So V total here would be like 0.6. In fact, I can just, I'm just going to graph the total V. It's like 0.6 right here. And in the middle, it's zero, remember, because they cancel off. The green one's trying to make a mountain at this point, this high. The blue one's trying to make a valley, the equal height under underneath the ground. They cancel out. How about the blue plate? Blue plate creates a negative one value of V at this location, and the green plate's creating a value of, you know, positive 0 0.4. 0 0.4 plus negative one is like negative 0.6. So there's a voltage between them. You could just see it here. Uh... You know, the total V at this point was like 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is the total V. The total V at the blue plate is negative 0.6. And so the voltage between them, you went from 0.6 to negative 0.6. The voltage between them was 1.2 volts because the voltage is the difference in V. Now keep in mind, this 0.6 isn't the V from one plate or the other plate. It's the V from both plates at this location. Similarly, the V over here is the V from both plates. They're both of their contributions at this location. Okay, now here's the crucial part. We're gonna move these plates apart and we're gonna try to ask why does the voltage increase? So let's try to watch this happen. Um, I'm gonna move the plates apart, here they go. Watch these two points, you know what I mean? So here we go. They, oops, I kind of smudged it there. As they move them apart, they get farther apart. You see that? They're getting farther and farther and farther and farther and farther apart. Now, now the value of the total V at this green plate is like 0.8. And the value of the total V at this blue plate is like negative 0.8. That means the voltage is like 1.6. Because, you know, if you go from 0.8 to negative 0.8, you've changed by 1.6. Indeed, moving these plates apart increased the voltage between them. But again, that doesn't ask the question, why? Why did this happen? Well, think about it. When this blue plate is close... The blue plate is trying to create a valley everywhere around it. It creates the deepest valley right next to it, but it creates significant valleys anywhere nearby. If this blue plate is near the green plate, see how this total comes down? The blue plate's contribution to the V over at the green plate um, is negating the value that the green plate's creating. So the green plate always creates a value of V of 1 right at it. But the closer I bring this blue plate, the more it cancels. I mean, if you think about it, if you put these right on top of each other, obviously 
If you put a negative plate right on top of a positive plate, and they're literally like merged, you have no net charge anymore. Look at the red line. Zero everywhere. There's no voltage whatsoever. Clearly, as you move them apart, you're going to get more voltage because now, you know, you can go from some positive V value to some other negative V value. But when they're really close together, they're partially canceling each contribution. So the value of the total V here at the green plate, very small because this blue plate's like, hey, what's up, bro? I'm going to cancel everything you do because I'm right next to you and I'm just as charged up. But as we move them farther away, the blue plate can't actually contribute as much over here, farther away, right? Its contribution dies off. So the blue plate tries to create a valley everywhere. It's not creating much of a valley here at all. The green's always creating one right next to it. The blue barely creates anything over here. Similarly, the blue's always creating a negative one right next to it. Uh, but the green, you know, if it's really far away, can't contribute much positive here. So they don't cancel each other off as much. That means the total V value at the location of the plates is higher. And that means as you move them apart, the voltage gets higher. Obviously, there's a limit here. What's the maximum voltage you can get here? Well, obviously, it's just going to be like uh, two. You know, the biggest the V can get here is one. The biggest the V gets here is negative one. There's a limit. You know, <laughs> you can't just be getting like infinite voltage over here. Now, um, you know, on the AP or whatever, a lot of times the assumption is these are very close. And look at what happens when they're very close. This is interesting. The slope is basically constant here. That is to say, remember, the slope of the V is the electric field. Slope of the potential graph is the electric field, or at least negative the slope, whatever. The point is the electric field's constant here because the slope is constant. Anytime these plates are close, look how constant it is. In fact, it remains about the same slope. So it kind of doesn't matter. You make the plates really close, you get a small voltage, but a certain amount of E, electric field. Make them farther apart, you get a bigger voltage, but still the same value of E. I mean, remember that E, one way to think about it is that it's you know, change in V over change in X, you're getting a bigger V and a bigger X and that ratio is staying the same, which is kind of miraculous. Um, that's kind of like amazing, but it doesn't last forever. Dude, this is an approximation. Approximation because eventually, look at that slope is getting weird here. You're getting some whoopsie doos. It's we've sort of left the zone of approximate constant E. That's why this doesn't last forever. So if you ever took an AP exam or an engineering physics exam, and they told you if you separate plates, the voltage increases. They're right, but there's a limit. You know, I think a lot of us in the back of my minds are like, wait, if I just move this thing to infinity, do I get infinite voltage? No, you don't get infinite voltage, but you are getting more voltage. And the physical reason why is that the contributions of each plate aren't negating each other as much at the location of those plates when they're nearby. And when they're farther away, you get to see sort of the bare value of V created by the green plate over here because the blue is barely affecting it. And you get to see the bare value of the blue plate moreover because the green plate's not affecting it. They're not negating as much. The biggest voltage you'll get is, you know, two times the voltage of one of them. This doesn't go forever, but it does get bigger. Totally counterintuitive. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's kind of counterintuitive. But hopefully this gives you some physical understanding of like what physically is going on and why it might make sense for the voltage to increase when you separate plates.